One of the things I love the most about you is your love and promotion of vegetables. And I'm curious why it's important in general to eat not just raw, but also cooked vegetables, but even more important when somebody has cancer, to have both. That's right. Our immune system is dependent mostly on our green vegetable consumption. And I'll say this simple, tech, simple point right now is that green vegetable consumption is the most important factor in governing our longevity. So if you could ask the person, what's the most important factor governing, governing a person's length of life? And the answer is how much green vegetables they consume over their lifetime. So that's the most important thing. And there are four types of, so with no threshold effect, which means all these foods we're saying are so important to prevent cancer, like mushrooms and berries and pomegranates and wheat germ and flax seeds and, and scallions and broccoli sprouts. And I can keep going on and on with all these powerful anti-cancer foods, right? But the point here is that those foods have a threshold which means once you have a quarter cup of mushrooms, you've gotten the maximum benefit. Once you have a quarter cup of tomato sauce, you're getting the maximum benefit. Once you have a tablespoon of, of wheat germ, that's, you got it. Once you have a tablespoon of ground flax seeds, you got the benefit. Once you have a, you know, taking a whole cup of flax seeds is not, is not going to be better. It'll be worse for you, right? Because you expose yourself to too much cadmium or, you know, or thallium. So we're talking here about getting a variety of foods in the right, in the right amounts. So you have precision here with how much you're taking. But with regard to green vegetables, no threshold means that the more you eat, the better, and the more you take in, the better. And the reason why we add green vegetables cooked is it enables people to get more of the green vegetable compounds into their body and into their blood. So your the ability of the cell to fight cancer has to do with the nutrient density of these phytonutrients in the cell, the concentration of the phytonutrients in the cell in conjunction with the removal of toxins so the lat re so low level of toxicity and the high level of nutrient density in the cell, which means lowering body weight and you know um, to increase nutrient concentration in the tissues. And then we're talking about a high intake of all of these four types of green vegetables. So we have two basic types, the cruciferous vegetable and the non-cruciferous vegetable. And the, cru the cruciferous vegetable is the broccoli, cabbage, bok choy, kale, collards, watercress, arugula. Um, and these are very, very important to take in raw and cooked. The, in the raw form, their myrosinase enzyme is intact. So it forms more ITCs in the mouth in the relation to how well you chew the vegetable. So I'm gonna say that one more time, is that the most powerful anti-cancer substance in the diet are the ITCs formed in the, the isothiocyanides formed in the mouth when you're chewing raw cruciferous vegetables. And their amount you form in the mouth is proportional to how well you chew the vegetable and break open each cell. So if you eat a salad with arugula on top or baby bok choy or, or shredded cabbage, you're getting, some, you're getting some ITCs from those foods. But if you eat it, if you chew it and swallow it the way most Americans eat, where they don't liquefy every mouthful, they're only gonna get about 10% of the available anti-cancer compounds. So the better they chew, the so we're training people to be so mindful to chew the salad up and mixing the lettuce with the arugula and the, you know, and the baby bok choy or whatever to mix it and to focus. So you're getting both those compounds simultaneously because lettuce gives you the richest source of sulfoquinivos and, the, and we're getting the isothiocyanus and chewing it with the mouth and mixing it with the bacteria between the teeth is going to form more nitric oxide and other beneficial anti-cancer compounds. But in any case, so that's the one type is raw cruciferous vegetables chewed impeccably well. And the next type is cooked cruciferous vegetables. That means cooked broccoli, cooked cabbage, cooked bok choy, cooked Brussels sprouts, right? Because we're getting beneficial anti-cancer compounds from cooked vegetables, even when the myrosinase enzyme is deactivated by cooking, and usually with walking or, or cooking it partially, with the way we cook, we're not deactivating all the myrosinase. So that's, and we're, so we're increasing the amount that we can absorb, digest, and eat when we add both the raw and the cooked. And then we're eating raw and cooked non-cruciferous, like lettuce, and like string beans, and zucchini, and artichokes, and asparagus, and all these types of grains, all these green vegetables that are not cruciferous, that are also rich in anti-cancer compounds. 
particularly um, sprouts and lettuce, right, which are really important for the for the bacterial milieu in the digestive tract, right? So and are rich in the and these cancer fighting compounds. So we so yeah so we're having so that means I might have had a big salad with sprouts on top and arugula on top for lunch, which I chewed very well as a major necessity to prevent and live longer and fight cancer. But now I've also had my dinner where I had the broccoli and the cabbage with the mushrooms and onions cooked with my Thai curry sauce or something, you know, or with a mushroom Alfredo sauce. I'm having, so I also have them cooked. And when you walk it, it's like partially cooked. When you blanch it, it's like partially cooked. So you're getting, um, and the partially cooking or cooking helps some nutrients to be absorbed better compared to totally raw. So even though cooking just, um, prevents the absorption of some nutrients, it enhances the absorption of other beneficial nutrients. So by having the combination of both raw and cooked, we maximize the nutrient exposure and we increase our ability to eat more, more green vegetables and more types of green vegetables. That's great. Could you talk about how each G-bomb helps greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, seeds? Sure. So we talked about, you know, it's funny how that they all help synergistically by hitting one factor. For example, we know mushrooms are probably the most powerful aromatase inhibitors, which means they lower estrogen, which recruits the risk of breast and prostate cancer, hormonally sensitive cancers, right? But you know what? Green vegetables also have some ability. Flax seeds have some ability, have seeds have some ability, like flax and chia seeds. Mm -hmm. And even certain beans like soybeans have aromatase inhibiting effects too. So what I'm saying right now is that the lower, the, the, Hormone, fixing the hormones to low, improve the estrogen, testosterone, and estrogen progesterone ratio occurs from eating the right foods, but the ability of mushrooms to have that powerful effect is enhanced when you eat the beans and the flax seeds and the green vegetables in your diet with the mushrooms. Now let's take the angiogenesis and the anti-angiogenic factors, which we cancer cells can't replicate unless they get a blood supply. Cancer cells have to be fed, and the blood is the way they're fed. So when cancer cells replicate and grow, these cells that are abnormal secrete factors that promote, that are angiogenesis promoters, which tells the blood vessels to grow, to allow the cancer cells to grow and spread. So cancer cells can't spread without promoting angiogenesis. And the most powerful substances that prevent angiogenesis, and there's no drugs that can do this as effective as mushrooms can, are mushrooms and mushroom variety. And even using mushroom powders, we use, a, 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 we use mushrooms in the diet. We advise people to buy, they actually buy from us these bags of wild forest collected mushrooms. And they also use mushroom powders, like a, the most powerful anti-cancer mushrooms mixed into a powder. So yeah, we have these mushrooms because these mushrooms have the most powerful anti suppress the angiogenic promoters secreted by cancer cells, right? But now we find that the cruciferous vegetables have angio the the flax seeds, the onions, and, and the other foods that you use in conjunction with the mushrooms magnify synergistically the anti-angiogenic effects of the mushrooms. So it's the entire dietary portfolio that's put together not, you know, by using scientific studies to show what foods have the most powerful effect at preventing cancer cells rep to replicate and what foods are most effective in preventing or making people live longer who have cancer. And then putting a dietary portfolio together that includes all these foods simultaneously that allows these foods to have the most powerful effect. So even though we might say eating a variety of mushrooms has the most powerful effect to suppress angiogenesis and estrogen, yes, but you don't get the maximum benefit from the mushroom's ability to prevent angiogenesis until you also include the other dietary factors mixed with it. And then we see, that's where we're talking more about precision nutrition, right? Because you had the raw cruciferous, you had your sprouts, including broccoli sprouts, you had the high levels of isothiocyanides, you had the onion compounds, the organosulfide compounds from onions. We can go into each food individually, but we're saying, but I'm trying to give a picture here 
that is when you include all these foods simultaneously is when you magnify the effect of each individual food. Like there was a study, for example, on women who had breast cancer, they followed them for 10 years. And they found that those who had a third of a milligram of lignin from flaxseed or from other lignin containing seeds had a 71% decreased risk of dying over that 10 year period compared to women not eating lignins, right? Now, that, they just had a little bit of lignin. By the way, a teaspoon of ground flax has seven milligrams of lignin. This is only one third of a milligram of lignin. They gave them the wrong dose. They didn't take enough lignins. They didn't have the variety of foods. They didn't eat all the cruciferous vegetables and the mushrooms and the onions. They just took the, just were measuring lignin content, right? And it still reduced risk of cancer by 71%. And they did it after the people had a diagnosis of cancer, which of course makes it, you know, um, some of those cancers could have been very advanced at that point. And it was still effective. The point is, that people don't have uh, accurate representation of how powerful precision nutrition can be to both prevent and be effective in treating or extending lifespan in people who have cancer. They have no concept of how powerful this is because, they, because the studies usually only focus on one individual element and don't put them all those beneficial elements synergistically together in one dietary portfolio. Did you follow me? So the so so we have the studies on on women who have breast cancer who are with cruciferous green vegetables. We have showing their reduced risk of death is about as goes down by fifty percent. We have studies with people taking mushrooms showing the so we're, we're looking at studies showing how beneficial they are individually. But we we have almost no studies. If I have clinical experience, this is what, one of the things we're trying to do with with raising funds for nutritional research. You know, with the Nutritional Research Foundation is actually putting together studies where you took the whole protocol of all these anti-cancer substances and foods into one, one dietary protocol, right?